Hello and welcome back to Half-Life Uplink with me, Oxfil. And we've got a satellite to align. Hmm. Last time we made our way to this installation that, well, the scientists told us it was absolutely flooded with radiation. Eh, not really, but whatever. He's a scientist, not... Oh, wait. I am a scientist, too. Huh. <laughs> Funny about that. So, obviously, since... Shit's going wrong. We, we're gonna contact uh, NATO or CIA or Pentagon. Someone that can actually take care of this. Freeman, you'll want to work quickly. Tune the transmitter to the USNRC. I repeat, tune to the USNRC. What? The USNRC? The United States Regulatory... Or, <laughs> the United States Nuclear Regulatory Commission? Put here just in case we didn't know what it was. But that that's not going to help us out. Oh well, I guess I'll I guess I'll do it. Nah, no, I'm going to I'm going to contact the UN as if I have any choice in the matter. Fortunately, you just keep turning till it lights up for you. Isn't that handy? <laughs> Excellent. I'm sending the all clear and the doors should open now. Oh, great. Cool. Everything is obviously going to go off without a hitch, right? Oh god, no it's not! <laughs> anyway, we get some banging tunes and we gotta fight our way out. No problem with that, right? We blew off a door, so we can just walk right out, I bet. Oh god! Somehow you're not dying from radiation poisoning. Alright, let's get at... Ooh. Well, we haven't seen this yet in... I, I can't remember if it's in the original Half-Life. I don't think it is. But... We gotta run, because there are going to be soldiers coming after us. As we'll see. Oh god! <laughs> Good thing they didn't see my head peeking in on them, so they'll never know that I just went through there. Oh god. What's wrong with you? Well, I seem to be seriously wounded. I don't think I can last much longer. Stop! <laughs> Oh god, he must have had a convenient heart attack or something. Well, I'm just gonna take his shotgun, so even if he isn't alive, there's no way he'll defend himself. <laughs> Alright, so let's get our first look at... Zombies! I actually really like... this first, uh... appearance of the Half-Life zombie in this demo, because you see him, like, carrying around... carrying along two... two of the dead guys, as if they're bringing them to have head, head crabs implanted on or something, as if they're actually intelligent, which I think is a really cool idea that they never really explore. I think they explored in Half-Life Opposing Force, but... Oh god! And we get ex we get exposed to barnacles. Man, this is great! We we're getting exposed to all the alien menaces right away. Of course, we're getting exposed to the barnacle like we did in the original Half-Life. By seeing another guy get eaten by him. And another guy. Man, sucks to be you, but I mean, I'd be killing you if that barnacle didn't... Oh god, there's a soldier up there, too! He doesn't look like he's... What's going on? Oh god, he's being eaten! Ah! <laughs> I actually... Besides my putting a little bit of a cheery, cheesy demeanor on it, I actually think that this, uh... This introduction of the Half-Life zombies is actually a lot spookier than the original Half-Life and the Barnacles, but mostly the zombies. Because I mean, you don't really get much of an introduction with the to the to that to the headcrab zombies in the original Half-Life. It's just like, oh, well, yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> but no, in this one, you get some sort of a a zombie mentality. You get them actually feeding on other corpses, at least that's what it looks like. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool, I think. Anyway, I believe we're all done with that. I don't think we run into, oh no, there is one more, one more type of enemy we run into in this area, but, uh, we'll be seeing in just a second. Oh god, we know that pattern of lightning and enemies fighting each other that totally was not in earlier games, like Doom, or 
to mm, I can't think of I can't think of any other games that had enemies fighting enemies for the player's amusement. But I do know that Doom did have that, so <laughs> I know at least that much. Game's getting a little choppy. It's almost like it's a demo or something. No, don't kill my my guard friend. I'll help you. Oh, he's dead ever. No, ma never, never mind that. It's not like he was that important anyway. He's no Barney Calhoun, that's for sure. Even though all the guards of that model are called Barney Calhoun. No matter. It's all right. I can take care of this alien menace all on my on my, all on my own because we are the free men. All right. So yeah, Vortigaunts as well. Still sporting their their green their green armor, their green uh, bracelets and choker. So slave collars. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Slave collar. <laughs> anyway, if you listen closely, right here, actually. Oh, I thought you could hear it from here. But no, there are Vortigaunts waiting for us back here, too, so we're gonna flush them out with a grenade. Take real good care of them. <laughs> of course, there were grenades waiting conveniently for us, but I could have sworn that you could hear, if you went in this room, you could hear the, uh, I can't remember what the, those are, but the bigger aliens with the one arm coming out of their chest with the, uh, seeking bullets. I could have sworn you could hear them. Anyway. Oh god, more of them, what'll we do? Besides blow them up. <laughs> Ooh. I just noticed how bad the throwing mechanics are in this. Actually, I think that's just me. Oh, throwing really is weird in the half in the original Half-Life series. And I've never really been able to figure out how it really works. Because the way that worked is it seemed like I was I was starting to move backward when I threw and that's why it didn't move far, but if you throw it while you're stationary, it'll throw the normal distance. That's why I don't really understand how it works. Anyway, that's something to talk about in later Half-Life videos, because this is not the last time we'll see grenades, obviously. Elevator music is still the same in the future, yeah. Ah, uh, good. Just head crabs. No real dangers here. Alright, so you're gonna open it for me, right? Right? No? Well, it's open anyway, so it doesn't matter if you guys help me or not. Actually, why don't you come with me? Yeah, let's run like hell. Is someone there? Oh god. I, I can't see a thing. Don't worry, buddy. I'll help you out. Uh, I got a, cr I got a, a head crab removal device. Uh, I'm a scientist, so I even have a doctor. So believe me, I know what I'm doing. Oh God! I killed him as well. Again, just a nice addition to the one scientist we had that in the beginning of the original Half Life that was like halfway through transformation. I really wish they had done more. Ah! Hound eyes! Not gonna get away from me! Actually, it seemed they did, because... Yeah, we'll, we'll save you. Like I was saying, I wish they had done more with just head crab lore. In-game lore like that. But, this is actually a tricky part of the... of the demo, because if you don't run right away through that gap, like I didn't the very first time, you'll get blown up and crushed and all sorts of nasty things will happen to you. So, unfortunately, I wish that hadn't happened, but you know what, it happened my first time playing through this as well, so let's take out these hound eyes at least. Forgot that they should introduce them in this game as well. Well, introduced, it's still a demo and Half-Life came out first, but...
I mean... I wonder who made this. <laughs> anyway, let's go out and... Oh god! Yep. Getting caught by barnacles, just, you know, hanging out there. No real reason, but... Oh man, gargantuas as well? And they're just throwing everything at us. In fact, it's like we don't even have an enemy that's left to see at this point. Well, I guess they're the worms, but... Eh, who cares about those? Besides me. Anyway, in true Half-Life fashion, we'll be going through a duct. In just a second. As I wait for this electricity to stop coursing through it. Last thing we want to do is get this far and then get electrocuted right away. But this is going to bring our tour of Half-Life Uplink to a close. Like I've said many times before, it is just a demo. A demo that they put after, out after the game came out. But I think it does a lot of really neat things. I think it's also could have used a little work. Because originally... Ah, the G-Man! Get him! You can't get him. Originally it was part of the main game. But it was cut. And it, it kind of... You can kind of tell why. Because there's not a lot to it that... Well, there's not a lot to it. It doesn't really add anything to the game. Oh god. But this gargantua is going to add something to us. Some big gaping holes. Oh no! If the demo didn't end here. It doesn't really add much to the original game, and it's got some cool ideas in it, but it really just doesn't feel right a lot of the time. So anyway, that was Half-Life Uplink. Hope you guys enjoyed it. This has been me, OXFU. And I will see you guys in the next... Well, I'll see you guys in other videos, but I'll see you guys in the next Half-Life series that I do, which should be Half-Life Opposing Force, where we step into the boots of one Kern, or Colonel, Sergeant Adrian Shepard. No, Corporal Adrian Shepard. What am I doing giving him a promotion? Ah! <laughs> and we see, we see the events at Black Mesa from the other side. So again, that was Half-Life Uplink. Hope you enjoyed it. Take it easy.